pouring out. You know them. You love them. Show your love for Jason and Elisa with EECC Travels. <laughs> Come on down. You're the next contestant on the cruiser, right? Take your seat there, baby. Now we're going to keep that applause going for the one, the only, the lovely Sharon and Jamie with Sharon at Sea, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Folks, show your love for the man, the myth, the locador legend. Give it up for Tony B. And folks, if there's Tony, there's also going to be another amazing YouTube legend. Show your love for Don with Don's Family Vacations. <laughs> Look at that, Don. Just the way it was supposed to be. Now, uh, folks, this chair is for me. My name is Josh with Cruz with Josh. I'm so excited to be out here with you today. Helping us out in the audience is going to be Mr. Pat himself, John. John, take it away, my friend. All right. well, let me... Maybe. Maybe. Imagine that. I don't have the microphone on. Uh, what a guess. Yeah. So, you know, before we get started with this, I just have to say I'm looking around this room and I'm seeing all these people and like it, I can't help but notice like the community that all of you guys have helped build and I mean this is freaking awesome y'all right? so we're gonna I'll just be running around with the microphone if you have a question uh, raise your hand or get my attention, Magak, I don't care, whatever you gotta do. Uh, but I'll come find you and uh, you know, I'll give you, I'll hold the microphone for you. So uh, if you have a question, have it ready and uh, let's get started. All right, I see you, I'll be right back. <laughs> you were ready. What's up to you? <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Good morning, James from Chicago, part of the Cruise Critic. This is for Tony. I'm dying to know what is the punishment for today. <laughs> See, I'm not the only one. There we go. Yeah, I should have. I, I hate to punish so many lovely people, but uh, look, if you, uh, what do you have to do today? <laughs> Wake up. <laughs> Make sure, make sure everybody is liked and subscribed to everybody up here. And unfortunately, <laughs> if you do not like and subscribe to everybody up here, I will be forced to punish you, which Woo! is uh, something the universe has made me do. And my punishment will be this. Uh, you will be a part of the 24-hour October marathon, and, uh, and you, you will be assigned a slot where all you will do is begok for 24 hours. Trust me, you don't want that. While listening, while listening to the Bagat, which uh, is wonderful, but 24 hours, I don't even think John Clayco could do that for 24 hours. <laughs> I'm already a Bagat guy. That's a good question. Good to meet you. Hi, uh, Les from Canada. Oh, Don Go. Woo! My question is, who actually originally thought of this idea, and how did it become what it is? Uh, Hello. Hey. Hey. Um, I, I guess I will take credit for that one. Um, I think a, I think a lot of people probably had this idea in the back of their head, but I just one day said, you know, why don't we get everybody together and do one big group cruise with everybody? And we've got so many great creators on board with us and so there's us but there's so many more so tomorrow you guys are going to get to meet a whole lot more creators so let's keep building this community because it's awesome i have a question hi slinky hi slinky <laughs> and as somebody who's been following a, a lot of y'all, I think for since at least 2013 or so, I, I, I'm trying to place my memory. 
When did y'all start your channels, if you mind me asking? <laughs> okay, I'll start. We started January 2016. Let's see. Actually, our first video was October, I believe, 2016. We started uh, April 2017. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> April 2017. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think mine was like 2015, maybe. Woo! Was it April of 2015? Yeah, yeah. April of 2015. Oh, I was three years old. <laughs> and I'm six now. <laughs> Um, I'll tell you what, over 30, but yesterday was my birthday, so I was out late, I didn't eat that. I'll have an update later, there's more than 30, I guarantee you that. <laughs> Nancy has a question, I knew you'd have something to say. <laughs> Tournament. Yeah. <laughs> Clearly, it would be me. Yeah. 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 Is the uh, Canadian here? <laughs> Although I said the same thing about mini golf and then Tony beat me. <laughs> I've seen Don, well, air hockey, ice hockey, yeah, it's the same thing. It's in the Olympics, it's in the Olympics, I think. Of course, I'm the one that's had the coach. I would win in air hockey. Listen, I think a lot of people may have seen the video, and by a split second, I didn't win. Everybody saw it, I had the last goal. Uh, I was, I proclaimed myself a victor, and then uh, it was taken from me. Yeah, it's like the Chargers not making the Super Bowl. Oh! Oh, shots fired! Shots fired! Wow! <laughs> and I didn't have to turn turn like that on me, but... Uh, <laughs> well, listen, I mean, maybe, I'm pretty sure there might be an air hockey table adjacent to the sea and I've seen it up there. So, uh, maybe you want to meet me at some point uh, during the screws well, weekend. I mean, Don is already proclaimed, so I think you should... When's the rematch? Well, I think we are right. Challenge accepted. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, you're calling a stand in? No, no, no. I'm okay. bringing in a ringer. Well, I just wanted to bring in a ringer. I wanted to see who won between you two so I could dominate over. Oh, okay. oh. <laughs> All right, well, I think that might answer the question. <laughs> you may be me over close to your mouth when you talk so we can hear you better. Um, as far as the start, we, we nev none of us ever thought that that would last as long as it did. And I think everybody was just ready to cruise again. Um, I think all of us were on one of the first cruises back. And so we were just ready to go. As soon as the CDC said we're on, we were on. So we were ready for it.
think, um, I mean, listen, I, I would just want to say that, uh, you know, when this all happened in March of 2020, we had a big thing going on where we had teamed up with uh, Tony and Jenny, and we had a big group cruise that was supposed to be happening, and that got squashed, and, and then we planned another one for a couple months later, and that one got squashed, and then we all just kind of sat tight. But I think one of the nicest compliments we've ever had is when people come up and say, hey, you helped us get through the pandemic. We watch your videos, your live streams. Yeah. We did it for us, right, for our own therapy to get through it. And if it helped anybody else out as well, then yeah, that's cool. So uh, yeah, I'll just just building on what Jamie said. It's like you know we always thought it would come back. We just didn't know when, right? Like everything else in life, it was so in turmoil at that time. But uh, you know, to what Jamie's saying, it's like for us, we were just sitting alone, isolated too. And so the ability to uh, make something and connect, you know, whatever we could, um, it was awesome. So. Thank you guys, as much as you've said thanks to us, thank you guys for being out there and, and watching what we were doing while we were you know, in the same boat, just kind of locked down. So yeah, we knew it was coming back, it was just we didn't know when, and so, uh, but yeah, I can't thank you guys enough for, for being there for us uh, so that we could uh, you know, stay connected to life and this cruise life that we love. So appreciate you guys a lot, thank you. during the start up of the pandemic there, the shutdown, we decided to do the brilliant thing of going daily. <laughs> 700 episodes later. <laughs> but truly everyone here, it was great that everyone stuck with us during that time to find out all the info. And we got so many people called us and gave us information inside. So much so that some of the VPs from some cruise lines were calling me to find out what was going on with their own cruise line. <laughs> because the insiders were getting to us before they would get to them. And, and the crew members were amazing during that time. And we felt so bad that they were off work all that time. So I'm glad to see they're all back. And we're back. Yes, yes. Yeah, that's, that's right. I don't, I don't know what much more that I can say because it's been covered, you know. Um, I would just build off of what, you know, Jamie said, the, the, the Probably the number one thing that I get is, you know, thank you so much for for your silly live streams helping us through the pandemic. You know, where I did, goodness gracious, couples yoga in my living room, where I'm balancing. Matter of fact, you know, Tony, do you want to do you want to try some couples? I tell you, just just get up here and and we'll uh, okay, we'll all right. You ready? Yep. Now just just now easy does it now. Now easy does it. Wait a minute. This is a. I feel, I feel abused. <laughs> but it's, it's silly stuff like that, that, you know, like Tony was saying, it was just as much therapy for us as it was for you guys, and it was a great way for us to, you know, kind of forget about all the bad in the world at that moment. And, and I think that was the greatest thing about it, is that at the end of the day, when you're watching that live stream, we all took a moment and paused and said, you know what, right now life is good. These guys are, are great to watch, they're great to talk to. I feel like they're my family, and, and we feel like you're ours. So thank you guys. Good morning. Can y'all hear me? Yes. I'm a ham, I like the mic. But anyway, <laughs> first and foremost, thank you so much to each and every one of you for keeping Hope Alive to cruise again. We had just started cruising, just fell in love with it, and then the pandemic hit. So truly, uh, thank you so much. But fun question, each of you, if you don't mind, what is your most embarrassing cruise moment? <laughs> Maybe you didn't even vlog. <laughs> I'm going to get this out of the way. So you see, it was 2020 on the Carnival Mardi Gras. No, I'm just kidding. Um, my most embarrassing cruise moment uh, probably would be when I was doing the wobble on a mega deck party on a Carnival Cruise. And uh, the deck was slippery, and I went to jump forward, and I kept right on going forward. <laughs> and, uh, you know, there was, I think it was a group cruise, so there was like 25 cameras on that. And, you know. There's either that or the time that I went rogue on some towel animals after one too many drinks, but we won't talk about that. <laughs> 
<laughs> Seriously, there's too many to list. <laughs> so I'm gonna go with the very first time I ever did the Yes No Game yeah. Show. <laughs> and my nephew Mark, if anyone ever saw his video when he was on with me, he lasted three seconds. He said, Your name's Mark, right? Yes. <laughs> so I was making fun of him for like seven months, and then I did my first 11 seconds. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, yeah, for me, it, it had to be like maybe the second cruise or something like that. I love to nap. Like, I think naps should be a lifestyle, so I nap every day. Nap every day, it changed your life. It feels way much more productive. But uh, so I took, well, like, one of my first or second cruise naps, I think it was on the Carnival Liberty, and I didn't know you're supposed to put the do not disturb sign when you're taking a midday nap. And so I was just, you know, I was just in my, just my underpants, right? And, uh, you know, laying on top of the sheets there. And uh, I think they delivered room service. And I was like, oh, oh, they'll just walk right in the room. So that was the most embarrassing thing. Uh, and you quickly, like, it was one of those uh, teachable moments, as I like to say. Uh, I'm very familiar with the privacy sign now. So, uh, but, yeah, that, that, that was it for me. I don't know. This, that's, a, that's a tough one. Um, because I don't, I'm not really easily embarrassed. I mean, I've done a lot of dumb things. And... Um, you know, just, you just, I don't, if some of you know me, I have a little bit of an alter ego that I appear a little bit later on in the evening. And somehow, in a video a while ago, I went from Jamie to Jimmy. And Jimmy comes out late at night, and some people say, Is Jimmy coming out tonight? And what's Jimmy doing? And are we going to have a Jimmy sighting? Um, but one person that doesn't really like to see Jimmy is Sharon. <laughs> She literally would say to me, hey, on this cruise, uh, Jimmy's not coming. <laughs> don't, don't pack anything for him. Don't bring his luggage. He's staying home. So I guess just there can be many Jimmy nights um, where, you know, you just go and you're going, you're going, you hit the wall, and then you find yourself napping in the middle of a group of eight or ten of your friends for a good night. That's probably it. Sharon, how about you? You, you know she Sharon wants to answer this. this. One is when, um, maybe we were kind of Jimmy, but this was one of our first cruises. We were sitting in uh, the main dining room, our first night at dinner, and I had a purse with me, and it was a brand new purse and a whole glass of wine. Got spilled by Jimmy. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> so that was a little embarrassing. That's not what I was actually going to say, but you made me think of that. So. <laughs> Yeah, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right, guys, so it's been a great day. I hope you enjoyed your time. Let's <laughs> um, uh, see. So probably most embarrassing was um, on the Mardi Gras, I think. I don't know if anyone's been on it where, I, you know, the public bathrooms have that weird thing, how they just kind of open up. Well, what? having people walk in on you in the bathroom, I think, was probably, yeah, yeah, yeah. probably the most embarrassing. So after that, I decided I had to walk back to my cabin every time to go back. <laughs> That's happened to me as well. A little too much to drink and forgot to hit the button in the uh, handicap one. Uh, but uh, mine is uh, pretty rough. It was on the Carnival Vista, and... Um, they pulled me in a lineup, what was the cruise director, Matt Mitchell, to do, yes. to do the YMCA, and um, they tell, I ripped my shirt off in the middle of it, and <laughs> threw it somewhere, and that was my favorite shirt, and I, don't, I really miss that shirt to this day. That was quite embarrassing because a lot of people filmed that and sent that to me and showed me. Ooh, very embarrassing. I'm going to be the boring one up here because I can't really think of much of anything until Sharon said something about that bathroom because that happened to me too. That is the most confusing bathroom on the face of the earth. You can't figure out how to lock the thing and then somebody's going to walk in on you. So I'm, I'm with you on that one. <laughs> I'm Izzy from Teresa. <laughs> I'm Izzy from um, in the six or seven years that y'all have been doing this with vlogging, how has vlogging changed your audience, your subscribers, their needs, what they want?
from the industry, what they want from you? How has that evolved over the last seven years? Mm -mm. Well, for us, this started just as a hobby. I mean, it was just, hey, let's uh, record on our vacations. And it was our kids' idea for us to start a YouTube channel. So it started as just uh, every now and then, let's go on a vacation and film something to people asking me if I'm in a travel agent. I became a travel agent. And, you know, we started putting these amazing cruises together and doing tips videos and vlog videos and then during the pandemic trying to figure out what else to do other than cruising we got into the all-inclusives so so much has changed since we started this channel and it's just been an amazing experience i mean going from something that we thought nobody would ever watch to actually having an audience and it blows our minds every day that you know that this has happened and it's just it's been a, a whirlwind and it's amazing and meeting all of you wonderful people is has just been great so vlogging has changed a lot since the very beginning and I'll just kind of bounce off that um, we had no intention of doing this going to Disney she was taking she had this camera. She got the camera. It's all her fault. Uh, and she's waving at everybody's face, and I was just not into it at all because, you know, like she said, I just didn't, you know, I was very uncomfortable with being on camera. I'm quite a shy person, actually. Uh, I'm terrified right now if you can't tell. Uh, but anyway, then our sons, our twin boys, were like, you know, why don't you guys do a YouTube channel? And I'm like, oh, hell no. And she was like, hell yes. And boom, off we go. And, you know, when we started out, she was she was doing the editing just on iMovie. Don't and, watch this. <laughs> yeah, we've come a long way since the beginning, believe me. And then uh, things started kind of rolling and people started watching and we just could not believe it. And then the next thing you know, she became a travel agent. Um, she says, look, I need your help. And I'm like, what can I do? And she says, well, learn editing. I took over the editing and started really getting involved in uh, doing camera work and trying to learn on the fly. And, and then it's just kind of taken off. And with the support of all you awesome people, it's grown and it keeps growing and we are just truly blessed to be here and we're having an awesome time. Our story is actually very similar to theirs. So um, we started back with, um, I actually worked, I was working as a nurse. I started putting out some tip videos. Um, we were into cruising mainly because of our son. We were into cruising with families and kids a lot. So we, we put out a lot of tip videos on that. Then we took our first cruise that, well, it wasn't our first cruise, but our first cruise that we vlogged in 2016. And we decided to you know, start doing some vlogs as well. I became a travel agent and um, quit my nursing job eventually. And, and we just kind of went from there and just, you know, slowly put things out. Um, I edited the videos at first when we first started and then Jamie got more involved and he took over that like <laughs> there because it was just too much for one person. So kind of um, very similar. We just kind of slowly grew and, and made a change and um, we just try to keep putting out as much as we can and, and moving forward. So we, we love it. We love cruising and we love the community and love putting out the videos. All right, now as far as like taking over, uh, doing editing and making the vlogs, I mean, I'm sitting here like, okay, I'm, uh, you know, there's a lot of young tech oriented people out there and I'm looking at this computer and I'm like, okay, what is this? It's, I'm 48 years old, I'm like, how do I do this? What am I supposed to do? You take the video, you put it into this thing and then you cut it, you paste it and you do all this stuff. So it took a little while to figure all that out. But as far as um, how the vlogging changed, I think our son dictated a lot of how our, our vlogging changed because in the beginning, there was a lot of focus on him and us and cruising together. And then there was about a three year window where he was just like, and somebody might relate to this, He's like, what are you doing? Put that camera down. You're so embarrassing. It's ridiculous. Don't say hi to me if you see me on the ship. I don't, I don't want any of my friends to know that I know you. And, and it was a whole different vibe. 
and and now he's kind of getting back into it and appreciate it. And by the way, uh, thank you from both of us and on his behalf, everybody who acknowledged his birthday yesterday yeah. and gave him some props and love. And he really loved it. He turned 18. Uh, for anyone keeping track, he's down 60 bucks in the casino right now. <laughs> but we're hoping he can come back uh, later. And uh, um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, I think that's it. And you learn a little bit about blogging and. Back in the day, everything was trying, you tried to make it as big as possible, and I think now you try to make it as short and sweet as possible, and um, and you just try to make something entertaining. And I guess the biggest challenge we have is you see my face a lot on the vlogs, and we get a lot of comments like, I thought this channel was Sharon at Sea, and who is this jerk, and he won't shut up. And, uh, and I'm like, hey, listen, the camera's just really heavy, and Sharon can't hold it for that long, so we uh, have to do it. All right, before I give my answer, can you guys do me a favor? Yeah, all right. So, uh, of course, my better half is not here, and she she worked extremely, extremely hard to uh, put this together, and she's really missing all you guys, and she's glad that everybody's having a great time. But can you guys, on the count of three, just say hello to Jenny B? All right, so uh, here we go. One, two, three. Hello! Yeah, so, so interestingly, um, it, it was really neat. Like when we started vlogging, very similar stories. We were just making videos for our kids. And, uh, you know, I think it was 40, like 2017, I was 46. And, um, you know, the average age of a cruiser, I think, is like 48, 49. And so not really a lot of people watching YouTube. And so I think when we started, a lot less people watch YouTube, and I feel like you know there were people making cruising content, but we didn't have these communities. And so I think the coolest evolution for me over the last five years is to see uh, new creators spring up, to see communities spring up, and to be able to have these kind of connections. It, it's neat because you know everybody's looking for their tribe, right? Uh, you know when we first started cruising, I really fell in love with it, and I would go to my day job, and it would be like, would you shut up? Like, you know, we don't really care about the crew. We don't know what you're talking about. We don't understand the magic. Yeah. <laughs> and so you're just like wandering in the wilderness, like, you know, where's my people? And, uh, and all of a sudden, five years later, two years later, as we all, uh, you know, made videos and more people watch YouTube and built communities, um, I, I'm, I'm like Jason, I'm the shy guy. I'm not good at making friends, but then I see a whole row of friends here that, that happened because, you know, we sat in our rooms and made videos. So. Uh, it's very, uh, it's very satisfying to know that just whatever we did, you know, to make films for our kids or to try to make stuff to entertain and to inform, all of a sudden we're seeing lifelong friendships. So it's, uh, I think that's been the big difference in the last five years, and it's really been special to kind of see that, that grow. So, uh, that, you know, that's why we're all here. Actually, the last five years is kind of why we're here. So, um, yeah, again, it's just a big thank you to you guys because if, if you weren't part of these communities, we wouldn't. We'd just still be making videos in our room, you know. I wouldn't get to be Jamie at air hockey so frequently, so. Uh, oh, the gauntlet is thrown, the gauntlet is thrown. Um, well, I also, that question about the most embarrassing moment, you notice they all started with this one time on Carnival? <laughs>
absolutely right. I am that young person that you're talking about, though, right? <laughs> I am that person. Um, no, my, my, my journey, I think, started, um, I was like 13. Really, I was 13. Um, and my friend, he had just started a, a vlog, and a vlog was a new thing at that point, right? It was brand new. And uh, I was like, well, what, what is it? He said, oh, you just, you know, you video about your day, and then you upload it to YouTube. And that was about six months before we went on the Carnival Breeze um, for my, I think it was for graduation, though? Yeah, my graduation. My, I have another mom over here, apparently. <laughs> I have a thousand of them, I just haven't met them all yet. Um, so it's for my graduation, and I was like, oh, you know, I'll, I'll film that, why not? You know, that seems kind of fun, I like, I like vacations, you know, I'm a kid, whatever. And so I did, and I uploaded it to, to YouTube, because that was, it was either that or Vimeo. And, well, anyway, so, uh, so I uploaded it to YouTube, and, you know, it kind of forgot about it. And I think it was maybe a year year and a half later, I, I, you know, you remember that I had that, and I said, well, let me, let me check it out, and it had, like, one of the videos had, like, you know, 4,000 views, and I was like, you know, to a, what, at that time, 14, 15-year-old Josh, I was like, holy cow, I am Justin Bieber walking down the street right now. I got 4,000 views, you know, and so I was like, wow, that was, that was neat, and I kind of enjoyed the edit process, and so, I don't know about you guys, but I, I really enjoy the edit process. Uh, I enjoy creating and making. I've always been a like get my hands dirty kind of guy and, and kind of be able to make something that I know 100% I did the idea, I did the shot, I did the edit, and I did the posting and production. To me, that is so rewarding. And then to, to have people like you that say, man, Josh, I got so much value out of that, or that was so fun. Thank you for brightening my day. It, it's... <laughs> It's the biggest, biggest reward, and I think at the end of the day, that's probably why we all do it, you know, it is because it is so rewarding and so fulfilling to know that you made somebody else's day brighter. You maybe were the reason that they laughed or smiled today instead of cried, you know, um, and, and for that, it's all worth it. So, thank you. This question is now for Don. Uh, there was one particular video when you were in Glacier, Glacier Bay and you were out in your balcony. It, it had like loud, like laughing music or whatever. And I have to say, it was probably one of the most funniest videos. I was hoping you would continue that video because I'd like to know how it ended. <laughs> it ended with me sitting on the balcony like this. <laughs> We're in the most scenic, beautiful place on earth in Glacier Bay, and people directly beside me are playing their music super loud, and it's not good music. <laughs> but yeah, that's, the, that's why when I go to Alaska, I always do back to back because I get a second shot at Glacier Bay. So when one didn't go, the next one went really well. I have a loud voice anyway, so. I, I'm Erin, I have, I guess it's like a two-part question. Um, I think it's kind of obvious in a cruising environment that you guys are recognized, um, but do you get recognized while you're out, like, it's, you know, eating local, you know, at a local restaurant, eating dinner, or, grocery shopping or, um, and then is it to a point that you're, I guess you're, I don't know what the right word, being famous, is it becoming a safety concern or do you need to like be aware of your safety now? <laughs> <laughs> So one, I had somebody threaten to meet me at the Wonder of the Seas, and they're going to teach me what a true blood is, which is obviously somebody who hasn't had the vaccine. And my community reached out to me. I had biker gangs, police officers, military <laughs> say, we'll meet you at the hotel, and we'll bring you to the cruise. I said, oh. I said, no, it's okay. I think I, think I can handle it. Of course, the person never shows up and stuff like that. So there's always those people out there. But there's far more better stories, like the lady who I, I met in Alaska, who I yep. thought was kind of stalking me. Yep. And it turned out 
she was going to cancer treatments and stuff like that and heard my story and she just followed me around the town and was too scared to come up and say hi. And I kind of kept on seeing her out of the corner of my eyes and I, then I finally caught him around the corner and she just burst out in tears. It was one of the most amazing experiences I've ever had to meet people like that. And so, no, I, are we famous on cruise ships? Yeah. It, the weirdest thing is when you're in Walmart and you got a tube on and you got your mask on and people still recognize you. <laughs> it's great. I was walking down the street in the middle of Florida and I hear this screeching sound of a car swerving over the corner like this. And I'm going, oh my god, I almost got hit by a car. Are you gone? <laughs> because you don't think about it, but it's awesome in so many ways, and it's never an issue to come up and say hi, ever, 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 because yeah, we wouldn't be here at all if it wasn't for everyone watching, so I don't think anyone out there has ever said, I've hurried away or walked away, because I will make time every single time, because it's, it's, it's amazing. Let me, let me add, the only time it's not is if I'm at the urinal. Give me a <laughs> Let's just wait until I wash my hands, okay? Um, yeah, you know, I like to say back, back home, you know, the, the question that sometimes I get asked is, oh, well, you, when I tell them about YouTube, oh, are, are, you, are you famous? And I always say, well, in this kind of thing, the answer could be yes, but only in the middle of the ocean. So, you know, it's the dolphins and whales and all that stuff. Um, for me, in, in Greenville, North Carolina, um, it's, yeah, that's right, my Charlotte people, hello. Um, you know, it, it, I've had it happen a couple times. I think the weirdest one was in Lowe's. Like, I'm just in Lowe's, and, you know, I think I'm in the screw aisle, and this dad walks up behind me, and I thought he was hovering over my shoulder, like, man, do you want wood screws or metal? What do you want, man? And he's like, hey, I gotta ask you a question, in a good North Carolina accent. <laughs> Are you that Josh kid? <laughs> yes, sir. How can I help you today? <laughs> anyway, that's how it went. So it happens. I've never had a, a bad instance. Like a, like Don said, it's almost always good, um, as long as it's not at the urinal. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's wild when you're a little shy and you start to get recognized, and so it's a uh, it's a blessing, right? Because. You know, like everybody said, if you guys didn't care about us and want to meet us, then you know it wouldn't it wouldn't matter. So it's uh, you know we've had some things though, like we've had people show up at the house, just knock on the door. Oh wow! Oh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but uh, yeah, I'll tell you, I got a, so I got oh, recognized in a Ralph's, which is a, uh, a grocery store in Long Beach, California. The cashier recognized me, right? So it's a cruising city. I figure that makes sense. I got recognized during the pandemic with my mask on just from the voice in a FedEx place. And then when I was in a casino in Las Vegas, I got approached by a, like a really, you know, kind of a stern looking fellow. And I thought I'd done something wrong at the casino. He was like the head of casino operations. He watched the show. So that was kind of cool. The weirdest thing, and, and it, it still makes me uncomfortable to this day. That, so we moved back to my wife's old hometown where my mother-in-law lives. The first time we're in Walmart. This guy approaches us and he's like, oh my gosh, it's Tony and Jenny from Walida Loka. It's like, really? We just got into town. And well, the cool thing is he's here today. Everybody, <laughs> this, is, this is Mike and uh, he uh, he lives very close to us and he's never just showed up at the house. So it's, it's, it's really wild. Yeah, so it, it's odd, you know, because there's just so many people. Um, you asked about safety concerns. I mean, you think about it in the back of your mind when you're getting approached by a stranger, whether it's going to be something good or something bad. And, um, you know, it's, it's good, but it does put you like, somebody shows up to your house a couple times, you get a little like, wow, what's what's going on here? So it's, uh, you know, and, and I, wouldn't, I wouldn't trade any of it for that, right? You know, it's like, you, you, it's just something that you have to learn to deal with, but so that's why sometimes on the video I say stuff like, hey, don't come to my house. You know, like, you know, I'd love to meet you, but you know, meet me out in the middle of the cruise ship, you know, don't, don't come to the room or something like that. So it's, uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's part and parcel. And again, I, I, I wouldn't, the, the, the good far outweighs the, the challenges. So it's, uh, you know, and I got to know Mike, so it's good. <laughs> All right, well, I don't know that we get the notoriety that maybe these kids, uh, or these kids do, um, being out and about, but I think, talking about safety, I remember there was a time where um, uh, uh, Matthew would get on the computer a lot, 
And I remember one time some kid screenshotted a video of ours and then sent it into the little gaming thing that he was doing and said, hey, is this you? And then a bunch of kids started making fun and that was kind of a, a, a weird moment. Maybe one of the reasons why when they're, they're teens, they don't want anything to do with any of, any of what's going on. And, um, but I don't know, I think the biggest concern is when you start to realize that somebody could be watching you and you know you, you get on a cruise ship and you know you get that feeling like hey somebody's over my shoulder i think they're hey sharon is that person looking at you or are they looking at me or what did i just say something or did i just do something weird or they're picking my nose is there a picture of that that's going to go online and you know that kind of stuff so you got to be aware of it but we love meeting people and having people come up and say hi and everybody said it already, but we've made so many great friends within the community. And, um, uh, you know, so there's never a bad time to come up and, and interact or, or anything like that. And, and maybe one of the most rewarding parts on the other end of that is seeing people that have come together and become friends through us. Like we've done a group cruise and other people have met each other and become best of friends. And then they cruise together and they create friendships and, and so on and so on. So. Uh, so, I don't know, safety, not a, a big concern. Getting recognized, I know we got recognized on an airplane once, and uh, uh, nothing, nothing, nothing huge. Though. Not as much outside of the cruise ship, although um, a few times outside. Like when we were in Hawaii, we were just walking down the streets of Hawaii one time. Uh, we ran into someone, and um, that was crazy. Yeah, and, but here, here and there, outside. Yeah, no great stories. No, no stalking no. stories to tell, no. nothing like that. <laughs> Yeah, um, when Matthew was smaller, we used to be more concerned with it, like about putting him out there. But now he's older, it's not, not as much of a concern. Matthew's a tall kid too. Yeah. Tall dude, not like me. <laughs> uh, anyway, ours is pretty pretty cool. We've been getting recognized uh, for a while now, and it's kind of nice though sometimes because, like for instance, I just recently developed tinnitus which is weird and I hate it. It's a constant ringing in your ear, which kind of sucks. But anyway, I went to the doctor to see about it and uh, my ENT doctor, Dr. Gatry? Gillery, yeah, and uh, close enough. And uh, anyway, we're sitting down there and, and uh, he, the doctor comes in and he's like, oh my gosh, man, my daughter follows you. And then uh, all, the, all the nurses in here follow you. And I was like, oh cool, so you're gonna be able to fix this thing, right? <laughs> It's like, no, no, he says, I got tinnitus myself, had it for 30 years, you're pretty much screwed, kid. <laughs> I'm like, okay, well, this sucks. But anyway, that, that's really neat, you know, and they, they're really friendly to you, they give you good service, and, and, and uh, that, that's really nice. We've, we've been recognized at the airport uh, many times, uh, even with masks on. I think uh, we go, our little local store, Kroger there in Alexandria, we live in a little small town, there ain't much to do. And so, you know, everybody kind of just watches YouTube, I guess. Uh, we get recognized all the time at Kroger, and they're like, oh man, you know, hey, I got a, I got a vacation rental, uh, you know, in Destin, if you guys ever want to come up, or I want a pizza joint. So there's a lot of perks to being recognized, <laughs> so that's nice. Uh, not that we ever take them up on them or anything like that. I think, what, what, what was some other ones? Uh, um. I think the weirdest one for me was we were in Ikea one day in Houston, had masks on and everything, and someone's like, hey, are y'all EECC trials? I'm like, how can you even tell? I'm mean, like, like my face covered. <laughs> so that was like the most unusual one. But I think like the first time we were like dumbfounded, we were like, oh my God, somebody actually recognizes us? Somebody watches our videos? And they know who we are, but um, it, it's cool. And I just, we just love talking to people. So um, every now and then you get someone who is timid and they're like, I, I hate to bother you, but can I just say, I'm like, of course, always come say hi. You know, we love meeting people. As far as safety, we haven't personally had any safety issues. Um, you know, we, we don't publish too many personal things. Um, I think, you know, my hair was something that I had to get personal about um, and, the response to that's just been amazing you know that was something that was really tough for me and you know i wanted to share that and i've gotten so much positive feedback and so many people said that that's meant something to them and touched them and so i'm really glad that i i shared that personal thing but thank you 
So, but you guys being part of our lives is, is really awesome. So we're glad to meet everybody. I like the one time when we were, I forget where we were. I think it was, oh, it was a cruise terminal. Somebody noticed us and they like screamed as if we were Tom Cruise. <laughs> And I was like, if only we could get more of that. <laughs> I guess I need to give her an introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, Mama Hokum. Yeah. The lady who gave birth to me. I don't know what she's about to say, so God help me. I wanted to go back to the most embarrassing moment. <laughs> oh. I was about to get married, so, you know, I have to do this. I have to love him because, you know, he's, he's moved out of my home, but, you know, he's still my little boy and he'll always be my little boy. Oh. But I had to think back when you said the most embarrassing moment. You don't remember this, probably, but it was our first cruise on the Carnival Victory. Don't get out of here. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> totally green, you know, didn't know anything, sailing out of Miami. Josh was seven, okay? Now, the thing about oh that... Oh, God, thing, not this story. Oh, yeah, this story. Oh, <laughs> so, the thing is, is, you know, Josh, and that's literally the, you know, Papa Hookman and I have looked back and we're like, you know, that is what got him into cruising. Because as we were sailing out of Miami on Governor's Cut, you know, he's right there at the front of the ship. And he's told me many times, just standing there looking at the water and things like that, that just spoke to him. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, that really meant a lot to him. And I told him, I said, well, I said, I think your love for the sea also comes from your grandfather, who was a Navy veteran. <laughs> so, you know, and served in World War II. So, you know, I, I feel like that he passed his love for the sea on to Joshua. But the story is, we went to the cruise, we came back, we were in Miami. So, we didn't know anything about Miami that time. And of course, Miami was a little more risque than it is now, <laughs> if you can believe that. We told the concierge, we're like, we want to go to the beach. So the concierge are like, oh, get on the city bus, take to the beach. We're like, okay. So we get on the bus, of course, the bus driver doesn't speak English. <laughs> we're like, okay. And he's like, beach, and drops us off. So we're like, okay. We walk over and they said, just go to the hotel there, tell them you want an umbrella, pay for an umbrella, you can get on the beach. So we do that, we set it up, everything like that. Jim and Josh decide to go walking down the beach. <laughs> We're on South Beach, people. <laughs> Josh is seven Many years old. Many years ago, South Beach. Yeah, the old South Beach. So they're walking down the beach, and Jim tells me the story. He's like, Josh is walking there, and he's like, Dad, I like this beach. It's, it's not as soft as the beach in St. Thomas, and oh my God, Daddy, what is that? <laughs> it so, gets better. It gets better, it gets better. So, you know, we're there, and, and you know, they're walking, and of course, a woman in a thong and topless. And so, you know, Jim comes back and he looks at me at the point, he's got this look on his face and he's like, this is South Beach, honey. He's like, they're topless. And of course, Josh in his seven-year-old eyes is going. <laughs> <laughs> you know, his sister is sitting over there and Josh looks at me and he's like, mom, everybody's topless. Don't you want to take your top off? And I'm like, no! <laughs> proceeds to take her top off and she's laying there and of course Josh is just there going <laughs> and I looked at Josh knew what I wanted yeah and I looked at Josh and I said Josh I said it is skin I said everybody has it I said you have seen me walk around the house what is wrong and he said yeah but mommy her boobies don't look nothing like yours <laughs> I said it I said it <laughs> Honkers on that woman, okay? Right? Ah, oh, God! <laughs> anyway. But we do love Josh. That's right. Ladies and gentlemen, Mama Hokum, let me get you down here. I want you to fall. She likes to fall everywhere she goes. Thank you so much. Take that mic away from her. I think, yeah, we've got to do the uh, raffle now. So um, here's the deal. When you came in in the back, uh, you should have got a ticket. If you got a ticket, hold it up. Let me see it. Let me see it. Come on, let me see it, folks. Where are they at? All right, we got lots of goodies down here to give away. So, hey, Lisa, yeah, yeah, oh, here. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody needs to fall and break an ankle today. So, who has got the bag? Uh, okay, Julie's coming down with that.